Previously in Fenero. I believe that everybody who is born of the Spirit should speak in tongues. It's a prerequisite for living an effectively successful life in the Christianity that we profess to all follow. In every circumstance, the Bible tells us not to forbid the speaking of tongues. Why? Because Paul and Jesus knew a time would come where some people would not be comfortable with that heavenly gift. And the Bible says in Mark chapter 16, and these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name they shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. And as it would be in Acts chapter 2, on the day of Pentecost, the Bible says they were all in one accord, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven and filled all the house where they were sitting, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat on each of them as they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. You see, this is a fulfillment of the last words Jesus had spoken to them. One of them signs that is going to follow you is that you shall speak with new tongues. You need the ultimate sign to set you a blaze, a light for the course that you must follow in this faith. If the apostles were to wait only for that one blessed experience to allow them to be effective and efficient in the preaching of the gospel, how do you go out with this, without this person? How do you walk without this person? With the evidence of speaking in tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And like I said, tongues are not one dimensional. They are multi-dimensional. Now you hear a man like Paul say that I speak in tongues of angels. So there is a language angels understand. There is a tongue only God can understand. There is a tongue only an interpreter and God can understand. There's a tongue these living things understand. There is a tongue non-living things understand. There is a tongue your body understands. If it starts misbehaving, when you speak, it can say, now they are speaking. The, the tree can know, now she's speaking to her body. There's also that blessed experience where God can make you speak in the tongues of men, but in a tongue that you don't know. Or for example, you're Ugandan and then an anointing comes over you and then you start speaking German. But the functions of tongues are twofold. The first function is for the edification of the fellowship, the body, the church. And the other on the pendulum is the edification of the person. Now let's go back to this which edifies the fellowship or the church. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 verses 5, he says, I would that ye all speak with tongues, but rather that ye prophesied. For greater is he that prophesieth than he that speaketh with tongues, except he interpret that the church may receive a defy. Now, in this instance, Paul was talking about the dimension of tongues that is for the benefit of the church. In the instance where you might hear me preaching and then you hear me say tongue, if it's for your edification, I will interpret it because it's emphasizing that it's important for you to speak what could come for revelation, for knowledge, for doctrine, for edification of people when you're standing before them. Then we enter the dimension of personal edification. 1 Corinthians 14 verses 4. He that speaketh in an unknown tongue edifieth himself. The root word there, edify, edifies. It's the word to build yourself. When you start speaking in tongues, there are tongues that are building your spirit man. They're empowering your spirit man. And the Bible says, star or fan into flame the gift of God which is in you by speaking in tongues. You know what that means? It means there are many things that God has given your spirit and they might not be applicable or useful in a particular circumstance. But one of those days, a need comes for them to be manifested. And the only way to get those things out of your spirit to manifest and express themselves in that order as God has designed or imparted them in you either as when 
one person laid a hand on you or you received it through revelation or insight or whichever way it did you star yourself and start speaking in tongues and then you are reminding your spirit man to wake up to the reality to express himself in that which your mind might have not retained when you speak in tongues you awaken the spirit man to tune back to something ancient in you something your mind might not recollect but it's inside your spirit everything you hear in a sermon read in your bible everything godly and it's true in your spirit is stored up somewhere and when the time comes for you to get it out it's available that is why you need tongues because tongues are the precursor they are the door that opens those things for you now i walk in the faith and confidence that in the time where there is a need for the expression of that reality i will have it available when you understand that that's when you understand what it means to minister from the overflow you can never run out of this thing why because it is not something you're trying to download in your head it is something that it's already there it's stored in your spirit when you star yourself God brings out something in Jeremiah he pulls something out in Ephesians it was always there in your spirit but it had never had some connotation in, in, in relation to the rema of that moment it was always in your spirit you read it once in Ecclesiastes it bypassed your eyes but you never knew that one day God would reconcile it and give another revelation and a certain point of vision on it like you could never imagine before and this proceeds from the Holy Spirit it's a beautiful thing when you're a business person and you get this thing it will put some wisdom on you and the Bible says the wisdom of a man makes his face shine that means it lights your countenance it announces you right it introduces you right that's why when you're going for a business meeting don't just enter stand on that door and say makam bara de goji then enter that meeting now i want to take you to the highest one that i know the bible says in romans 8 26 likewise the spirit also helpeth our infirmities a witness for we know not what we should pray as we ought now let me explain that remember i told you there are things your spirit can pray through by the help of tongues according to how far your spirit has been revealed of concerning God. But there's a realm where your spirit has never gone yet. There's a realm where your spirit has never learned yet. But in the essence of divine purpose and the need of the hour, heaven wants to invite you to that realm. God wants you to enter that place. It was ordained even before you were formed in your mother's womb that you were supposed to be invited in that place. You see, not every man who is invited in a realm is ready for it. Let me give you an example. This thing they call your heart, the human heart. I have seen people who are not ready, but with the right heart, whose spirits were not even prepared for what God wanted to do. But he was seeking for a man. He was just seeking for a man. And then he finds a heart and says, he's not ready. He doesn't have all that I need to make what I need. But there's something in his heart that I think I will need. And with this one, I have to create a certain portal for him to leap into that destiny. Because with God, I've seen times where the heart has been more important to him than your preparations. That's why I say, this is the highest definition of prevenient grace. If you're a minister, you understand it. You understand the times where the unctions of the Spirit invited you into revelations. Even you learnt while you were speaking. You just found yourself there. And with this one, you know, this is not something that has been in my spirit. This is not essent oil. This is something that is new. I don't know how it has come, but as, as I was speaking, I entered a place even I can't explain. But I feel the approval of God, the qualification of the Spirit articulate this and it gives you a language sometimes we know not what we should pray as we ought but the spirit himself maketh intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered 
here the word cannot be uttered means cannot be spoken in human language so it's a kind of tongue but it could also be a kind of sigh there is a tongue that can pray out of you as you ought because your spirit man did not have the knowledge of how you ought and then you find yourself carried by the spirit you start to feel a provision by heaven you feel it invite you to a place that you have not even exercised yourself in some of you have been in an experience where you were praying and out of prayer you just found so much agony in your spirit and you feel like there's a fire in your in your bosom and and it's it's consuming you and then you you either will cry or lose strength or pass out and it starts like a woman in back pants it's coming out you're pushing out something they don't know how they ought to but the spirit is helping them he's saying i know what you're saying but i can help you interpret this and i'm now speaking i'm helping you i'm interceding for you and, and you hear him interceding for you and you scream sometimes you cry and you get overwhelmed and and you, you you're a mess of yourself and you don't even know jesus goes to the tomb he understands what it is to raise a man who has just died but this one has spent four days and the bible says he groaned in the spirit you hear the spirit of the son of god say give me a testimony the world has never seen because at that point of groaning he was actually praying that was the prayer then he walks to the tomb and when he walks to the tomb he says father i thank you because you always hear me when i pray you have heard me when i groan and he says lazarus come forth remember he was 100% God but also 100% man he had to walk the journey of the process as a sample for you to tell you there are times God will want to do something out of you your human spirit cannot construct but he can because he's God when you understand how this realm works it's when you'll understand that not everything we are moving in we were ready for not everything we're functioning in we are qualified for not everything that we are going to express ourselves through spiritually will have the full understanding or knowledge of but the spirit will carry us he will help us that is why the middle thing here is called yieldedness you must learn the art of being yielded you must understand what it means to be broken because these are places only broken men go once you are constantly broken to pray in this realm you will see constant progress in your life join our online family spread the love and follow us on instagram twitter facebook and also subscribe to our youtube channel